Well, hello, folks. Stand by for yet another teeny tiny technical tutorial from NOS LLC. That would be we. Today, we're going to look at multiplexing and multiplexers for newbies. So, if you're a newbie and you don't know what this is, or you don't know what that is, and you do want to know what this is or what that is, you are in the right place. Now, hopefully, uh, you have been following the whole series in this uh, newbie series. This is video number 13 and we are definitely into uh, telephonic transmission now. And once again we'll deal a little bit with the uh, fundamentals. Subject at hand, um, multiplexing. What does that mean? It just means many onto one. You put many conversations onto one transmission facility here. This is a uh, shorthand for San Diego and this is uh, Santa Ana for many years in the f in the phone company back in the dark ages we we always use these very short names SNDG San Diego CAO1 uh, something like that so you could tell where these offices were so I've got uh, three uh, information streams being generated out here someplace by a phone or a computer or something and I can bring them together inside of a, some equipment in San Diego and I can put them all on the same shared facility taking me, taking me all the way up to uh, Santa Ana where I split them back out again into individual. Now I could have just run some wire from a uh, customer in San Diego up here to uh, Santa Ana. It's only about uh, I guess about a hundred miles or so but uh, that wouldn't be very efficient would it because I'd have to have a pair of wires for the red a pair of wires for the yellow a pair of wires for the blue and just keep going on and on and on so by going to a shared facility running full duplex meaning this guy can talk to that guy and this guy can talk back to that guy simultaneously at the same time that's what full duplex means um, so I've got this shared facility. Why do we do this? Because it's a lot cheaper to have one common facility carrying multiple transmission uh, phone calls, I guess. We'll just call them that for right now. Um, it's cheaper that way, which has always been the name of the game. Put more people on one facility, it means the facility is cheaper to uh, put in place and maintain because it's carrying lots of people sharing uh, the cost of that facility. So how can I do this shared facility where I can sh uh, uh, share it in space, frequency, time, or code. Those are the most common methodologies right there. So we'll look at these things. Uh, this one's going to be a little bit of a stretch for some people. Um, these, this is very common, this is very common, and this is also now very common. So what does that mean? Space muxing, space multiplexing. Well, technically speaking, just a cable, you know, the big cable with lots of individual pairs in it, that technically is doing a multiplexing function because it's taking, in this case, just three individual uh, conversations and applying them to a single thing, a facility, in this case, being just a dumb cable. So each one of them has its own uh, tip and ring uh, wire here, right? So what do we save? Well, we saved having a telephone pole with three individual wires kind of hanging out there in the breeze and now what we have is a cable that contains those three things. Um, now why are we calling it space, the final frontier? Well, for a couple of reasons. Um, in the switching world, I came from the transmission world, in the switching world, they often use this uh, term space to mo mean moving information from one location to another. It also means this, is that the uh, tip and ring wire here is separated from the tip and ring wire here by a little bit of space, meaning that wires are not touching. The plastic insulation around the wires are no doubt touching, but the wire transmission facility is separated in space. So. That's kind of stretching the whole idea, I know, but hey, it's a no, it's a no tech multi pair cable is a space multiplexer because they're all in the same facility, this time being the physical cable. Uh, but that's not getting us to the electronic stuff, that's where we want to go. So, most common form is uh, frequency multiplexing. In this instance, um, I've got to have this little thing out here. 
right. Remember from the previous chapter, those of you who just came from it, this is the modulation step over here. I'm going to have to modulate this voice frequency. Let's say it's coming from a telephone. I'm going to have to modulate it into a frequency that is different than this frequency and different than this frequency so that they can exist simultaneously on the transmission path, which could be wire, could be fiber optics, or it could be radio. I just call it air. You don't need air for radio, of course. But So each one of these is stacked up in a different frequency, kind of like uh, pancakes on a plate. I use that uh, idea in a more extensive um, uh, video, which you may want to go see if you want, want to know about the pancakes. So I've got a red frequency carrying this conversation, a yellow frequency carrying that one, and a blue one carrying that one. Frequency division multiplexing. And the thing to remember here is that these are parallel. That is, they are going on simultaneously. Another example of this is just your radio. It's, I'd have to draw it a little bit differently, but so you got a rock and roll station uh, with a radio transmitter over here and you've got um, you know, classical music with a radio transmitter over here and so on and so on. They're all uh, transmitting simultaneously on different radio channels, aren't they? So they're parallel also. You just usually don't think of it that way. But when we're running the same uh, uh, cable, same cable pair actually, or, or we're on the same fiber or we're on the same radio channel, mean telephone type radio channel, microwave, from San Diego to Santa Ana. They're stacked in frequency. Parallel frequency multiplex. Pretty straightforward, but we'll have to modulate each one of these to a different frequency. The blue frequency, yellow, red, so on. Pretty straightforward. Been doing this forever. Well, how about this? Time multiplexing. Once again, you can get really goofy with this. Uh, your home phone is a time multiplex facility because uh, your kid talks on it for a while and then you talk on it for a while and so on. It's multiplexed in time, but that's kind of stretching the idea, huh? We want to look at uh, electronic forms. So once again, uh, I'm going to share this single transmission facility, which could be wire, could be fiber optic, could be a radio system. I'm going to uh, share it in time. This is a serial channel transmission. It's not parallel. They're not on here all at the same time. They're on here one at a time. So to do that, I'm going to have to digitize my, let's just say voice in this instance, so I'm going to take my analog voice, go through a coder decoder, come out as digital. In this instance, this is my little piece of digit. Then the yellow one gets to put their little piece of information on, digital. Then the blue one gets to put their little piece of information on, and so on. So they share in time, sequentially or serially, the transmission path. And then over here, the red uh, digital bits representing, let's say, pulse code modulation, right? The codec did that. Remember that from the last uh, video? So that uh, digital uh, signal then has to come out through here right, to this particular one and then become back into, converted back into analog for the standard phone, like a home phone, wire phone. Same thing here. Get digitized, little chunks, little bits sent through the facility shared in time, comes back over here, convert from digital back into analog. Right? So we're sharing the facility, but we're sharing it in time. And then we can put it on wire. We can share it in time on fiber, which is typically the way it's done. Uh, or we can share it in the radio spectrum over here. Right? Okay, so just to give you a little more of information about that time sharing, I mentioned this uh, in the previous video that I'd eventually get to this, T-type and E-type carrier pulse code modulation, and here it is, time division multiplexing. So I've got uh, a device over here of some type that's going to pre create this 8-bit byte for a particular channel. If it's an analog system, or analog circuit is going to go through a codec and become this 8-bit byte. We've 
covered that before in the modulation. So now I've got an 8-bit byte standing <clears throat> on the channel unit waiting to be picked up by the multiplexer, the time division multiplexer, which in a simplistic uh, form is just a rotating arm that touches little buttons here that have these electrical signals kind of standing there waiting to go out. All right. So this one over here is um, for the uh, European T, uh, E type system, European used to be called SEPT uh, system, and this is the American system over here. This predates this one by about 10 years, so a lot of people say, boy, they're stupid Americans. You know, they really do things dopey. No, this was a logical evolution from the earlier analog systems, and after 10 years, one would hope that the Europeans kind of figured out how to do it a little bit better. Um, Often another tangent. So what this is then is a serializer. It's a sequencer, a time sequencer, because it picks up the eight bits for this channel or the eight bits for this channel and puts them out in a serial form, right? So then the next one is picked up as this little arm rotates around and it's sent out. Right? That's why we have one, two, three, four, five. They get sequenced in time. Right? Over here it's a different number of time slots or channels, but once again, if you want to know more detail about what I'm showing you here, I have a, several videos that go into this quite extensively. Right? But you can see how it's a time sequencer. All right, and then finally this one, which is the one everybody on their cellular radio is on nowadays. So we have a code multiplexing, meaning simultaneous channel transmission to many many users out here simultaneously not not shared in time not shared well I guess you could say they're shared in frequency but they're not stacked in frequency what you have in this case is a pulse code modulation time division multiplexing typically we feed in T type or E type uh, channels into these things so let's say that this is a T type or E type channel coming in here uh, there's a whole bunch of magic that gets done inside of here and it creates a, a broadband spectrum radio uh, channel. It's very wide and inside of that you have effectively what are little sparklies <laughs> of digital bits and those little sparklies of digital bits are coded specifically to go to, in this case the little digital bits right here, are coded to go to the red guy only and uh, the yellow guy won't pay any attention to the little bits in the radio uh, frequency that uh, are not his color and this guy he's looking for the blue stuff and doesn't pay any attention to the red or the yellow stuff so this is under a code so the red is a code for this guy the yellow is a code for this guy and the blue is a code for that guy and this works over code division see yeah, right there code division multiple access meaning everybody's on this at the same time they're not stacked up in frequency they're not sharing it in time like T type or E type carrier uh, they're just out there all together and they just pick this up often uh, in the early uh, um, educational uh, processes that we did to show customers what CDMA was because I, I can t I did tell you we had to do this over and over and over again we had to teach a lot of engineers that this is not like it's not like frequency it's not like time this is very different it's a code um, is that uh, people would say this is like being in a party with a whole bunch of room uh, a bunch of people in a room very noisy and they're all speaking English except for two people who are speaking French now if another French speaker walked into that very noisy room they would be able to pick out the French from the noise of all the English well this is the same idea right these are all the people talking all at the same time but here's French here's German here's English like that so by the code you can share the facility the radio right? code division multiplexing so bottom line what is multiplexing hmm? putting lots of things on one thing all you have to do is to decide what are the lots of things and what is the one thing and there you go thanks for watching 104 Roger rubber ducky over and out